March 19th, 2006. My first day on the job with the St. Louis Cardinals. Walt Jockety, who was then the general manager of the team, walked me into Tony LaRusse's office and said, Tony, this is Jason Selk. He's going to do the sports psychology for the team this year. Tony barely looks up, doesn't say a word, and goes back to his paperwork. So we stood there and waited for another minute or so, and then Tony finally stands up, walks right by me and says, you have 10 minutes. Now, I realized very quickly that I don't have a job with the St. Louis Cardinals, as I had been promised, but rather, I have an interview with the St. Louis Cardinals, and it is a 10-minute interview. Now, this was really bad because I'd been telling everyone I could get to listen back in St. Louis that I'm the new director of sports psychology for the St. Louis Cardinals. I walk into the clubhouse, and the players are all sitting in front of their lockers on their stools. It was a room filled with all-star players like Scott Rowland, David Eckstein, Jim Edmonds, Chris Carpenter, Yadier Molina, and Albert Pujols, not to mention future Hall of Fame coaches like Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan. I began my presentation by saying, I originally thought I had two hours with you this morning, however, I was just told I only have 10 minutes. I was going to teach you something called the mental workout. The mental workout is a five-step process that is scientifically proven to put you in a position to play better baseball more consistently. I won't have time to teach you all five steps, but I will teach you the first step, the centering breath. After teaching the centering breath, I looked up to the clock and noticed I'd already been talking for eight minutes. I didn't want to push my luck, so I asked if there were any questions. Now, you know that silence that's worse than silence, the one that sounds like crickets chirping? Well, that's what I heard. I'm standing there thinking, I'm about to go down in history as the first person to get fired before he's actually even hired. Then, thankfully, out of nowhere, Dave Duncan, one of the greatest pitching coaches of all time, raises his hand and asks if I would teach the second tool. I look at Tony La Russa and he gives me the nod, so I teach the next tool. After finishing up with the second tool, I again ask if there are any questions. Again. Cricket's chirping, but this time, all-star third baseman Scott Rowland asked me if I would be willing to teach the third tool. Now I look at Tony and he gives me the nod, and so I proceed to teach the third tool. Afterward, Chris Carpenter, who is just coming off the 2005 Cy Young Award, stands up, takes a few steps forward and says, everyone better pay attention because this is what we need to take it to the next level. And I'm thinking, bah. So I have the great fortune to be invited to stay and finish the two hour presentation that day. And then Tony invites me back for a second day. And then a third day. And again, each day for the week of spring training. Throughout the rest of 2006 season, I worked with the team and coaches, a season in which the Cardinals won their first World Series in 24 years. I was then invited back for a 2007 year, and then 2008, and 2009, 2010, and again in 2011, in which the St. Louis Cardinals, we won our second World Series in a six-year period. Now, I stepped down after the 2011 World Series to pursue other opportunities, but I want you to hear the story for two reasons. The first reason is, I want anyone I can get to listen to know those two World Series titles, that was all me. And please tell anyone you can. No. The truth is, when I was with the team, I played a very small role. But I took that role very, very seriously. The real reason I tell the story is that something jumped out at me six or seven minutes into my first day on the job that started to show me one of the reasons the St. Louis Cardinals are such an incredibly successful organization. These guys were taking notes. And Tony La Russa, the manager of the team, the person who knows more about baseball than all the rest of us combined, is the one writing most feverishly. 
It wasn't until a few years later that I realized exactly what I was seeing back in the clubhouse that day. I'd been working with one of the top players in the NHL and I asked this guy a question. I asked, what is it about you? What is it about you that causes you to be this good for this long? And I'll never forget what he said. He told me, I have an obsession for improvement. And that was what I saw with the Cardinals that first day on the job. I have since realized the obsession for improvement is a pattern shared by those who are most successful. So back to the real reason I told you the story of my first day on the job with the St. Louis Cardinals. You see, you wouldn't be here if you didn't have that obsession for improvement. I'm certain that you could find a thousand other things to be doing right now, but you're here. Now it's my job to make sure that I feed your obsession for improvement. I know I will play a very small role in your life, but I want you to know I will take my role very, very seriously. If you're ready to begin, join me now and I will lead the way.